What I love about Anchor is that it's given me creative control of my own material. I was approached by a big company to do a podcast about the art world, and I didn't want to sign over all rights to them. Uh, Anchor has allowed me to make this podcast and to keep creative control, as well as financial control in terms of advertising. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free. You can use it on your phone or your computer. There are tools that help you to upload your recordings uh, that you've done separately or on the app. They'll distribute it for you as well, which again, you know, I couldn't wrap my mind around distribution and they have it all there for you in one place, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. Uh, you can easily make money from it as well. Uh, they help you advertise, as you can see right now, I'm getting my first ad out through Anchor. And all you have to do is download the app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck with your podcast and getting your voice out there and owning your content. Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast. Today we're speaking with uh, Russian artist uh, Alex Kuznetsov, who I hope I pronounced that correctly, who resides in Moscow and who is currently working on uh, putting together work for two or three upcoming shows in Europe. Uh, I hope you enjoy this discussion about the Moscow art scene. Hi, Alex. It's Nicolette in New York. How are you? Yeah. Hi, Nicolette. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm in Moscow now. Yes, and at your studio? I still have no winter. Yes, I'm in my studio uh, here. It's a Where bit is quiet and already It's already dark here. Uh, wow. it, yeah, it's located near the old and very famous uh, movie studio, uh, Mosfilm. It's uh, not far from the center and uh, one of the places where all the... Uh, general uh, executives from Communist Party used to live. Oh, wow. So that's the school neighborhood? Uh, more or less, yes. They, but they have a separate uh, part uh, which is under the fence. And uh, now is a uh, Putin people lives there. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I remember when we met, you had a studio that was behind a very popular nightclub. Is that the same studio or it's a different one? Mm -hmm. No, that's the different one. Uh, I moved from there three and a half years ago, and uh, the club does not exist anymore. Uh, it closed, uh, I think, September this year, because wow. the whole uh, building uh going to be demolished and uh, the new property will be raised up there. Wow, amazing. That whole uh, time in Moscow is coming to an end, you know, the party time, the wild time, the crazy money time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever since come to the end here, and especially party and uh, this type of like luxury spending and living, it's mm -hmm. not here anymore. It's not like five wow. years ago. Everything changed. Wow. Well, tell us a little bit about your work. Would you describe your stuff as abstract? Yes, I, I still describe it as an abstract because uh, 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 there is no figurative meaning, uh, mm -hmm. but there quite a lot of like ideas or concept behind but uh, visually it's still abstract mm -hmm. and, and where I, did you help go ahead mm -hmm. yeah and uh, uh since i moved from uh, uh, graffiti uh and i used to do a lot of figurative things and uh, now i try to uh, to find a, another language uh, but uh, i i would say that i still have this feeling which graffiti gave me and uh, probably uh in the future i will try to connect it like abstract and uh, this uh, approach of graffiti there um tell me a little bit about how uh your work developed from that time in graffiti like what years are we talking about like the late 1990s early 2000s how did you start as an artist mm. Uh, I started graffiti in 1997 and uh, my artist career uh began from 2010 like 13 years later and uh, I actually I started with no idea what I gonna do but I really 
wanted to change something in my creative way of uh, and uh, I just started to play with the colors and uh, try to avoid any formal things uh, in mm -hmm. my paintings and uh, mm -hmm. also I read a lot of uh, uh, books about uh, abstract artists and the movement which uh, you had in New York in uh, lately 50s 60s mm -hmm. and uh i was really impressed about that and uh also i do a lot of um, gallery visiting museums and uh, mm -hmm. i try to find uh, what really resonates me uh, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the things are still abstract i i get in bored about uh, figurative uh right. figurative paintings like it may be very like attractive at the uh, in the beginning, or, mm -hmm. but uh, later on, I I really want to have something else uh, to so, have a depth. So, would you say you're a self-taught artist? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, and you, where did you learn English so well? Uh, it actually came from my graffiti experience because uh, in two thousand and one, uh, me and my guys from the who decided to move abroad uh, to visit few graffiti events, and we actually uh, was the first graffiti crew from Soviet Union who did that. And uh, I I knew that uh, it will be it would be complicated to get the friend get new friends and uh, uh, develop our relationship with foreigners. And I decided, okay, I have to go to English courses. And I was only the guy who did it uh at that time mm -hmm. and uh since that moment yeah I, I have some improvements with my language hopefully a lot, a lot. <laughs> and where did you travel Thanks. with the where did you travel with the crew with the graffiti crew uh yeah f first we uh, we started from poland and we got involved into a meeting of styles international events uh mm -hmm. pretty soon and uh, it was poland germany uh france uh, then uh, Belgium, um, also Spain, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we just moved around. And uh, we got a lot of experience from uh, from foreign uh, graffiti writers because uh, mm -hmm. that's the best thing when you can make this exchange of your uh, creative skills and uh, understand better how it goes uh, in a different country so culture. in different yes. world. Yeah, culture. Yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, maybe you can let me know a little bit. I know each collector is different and each person is different. But let me know a little bit about the collectors in Russia. Because recently, uh, someone requested a specific abstract painting from an American artist. And this painting, I have no idea where it is. It's in someone's private collection, but I, I don't know. If I showed them your work, would they, you think, be interested in a Russian artist coming from your background? Or... Would they be interested perhaps only in the designer name or the popular name or the in-demand artist name? What do you think? How does it work with the average Russian collector? Mm, that's a good question. Actually, uh, that's very different. And uh, every collector has his own uh, point of style. view, or, mm -hmm. uh, style and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, attitude to Russian uh, artists. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, some of them really uh, appreciate the new wave. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, yeah, I have to explain. Like in Russia uh, or after Soviet Union, we have uh, we had a big wave of uh, uh, new artists or artists who was forbidden uh, during the Soviet time, mm -hmm. and uh, it it made the like the whole how to say not not the style but. Uh, yeah, like the average style of uh, Russian contemporary artist, uh, it's a bit different from what you usually see uh, in states or in uh, UK. It has mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pain behind and uh, uh, also a lot of meanings and the quality usually not so good. Mm -hmm. uh, but people, uh, especially uh, middle-aged or older collectors, they really... Uh, like that because they grew mm -hmm. up from uh, the same uh, the same environment and they yes. can feel this pain and it resonates them mm -hmm. so they still buy old artists and the new ones uh, or like the new generation uh, it's mm -hmm. only 
uh, now changing, I would say, mm-hmm. and uh, people getting more attracted by street art or I would say post graffiti artists now mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's the trend all over the world, I think. Yeah, and uh, it, it changing now, which is good. And uh, in your case, uh, I usually try to do everything and then see if it works or not, because otherwise uh, you just pretend or imagine something, but it might be not the, uh, the real thing. Yeah, the actual thing. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Well, tell me what it's like working in Moscow as an artist. Are there particular challenges or benefits to working in Moscow? Like, how is it these days? Mm, I would say there are a lot of challenges and uh, not so much benefits. Because <laughs> there are... <laughs> I, uh, uh, the market is I, pretty low now after mm-hmm. 2013 14 when we've got the sanctions mm-hmm. and uh, also increase of the foreign currency according to the rubble. Uh, mm-hmm. The whole art theme actually now... Uh, pretty well decreased or in in a big crisis like money crisis mm. and uh, that's one challenge like nobody mm-hmm. really want to buy something but they still mm-hmm. buy uh if the price are very small or right. they wait for a long time then right. uh, also the custom is still a challenge uh mm-hmm. it's really hard to send uh, the artworks abroad or even uh, receive them back uh, receiving wow. artworks is the biggest challenge. Yes, you have wow. to explain to the customs that that's not a culture treasure or uh, something special. And right. uh, but but, but uh, even in the big uh, projects like for museums, uh, they mm-hmm. had this issue for a long time, and only last year they made a new law uh, which uh, make them uh, uh, easier to import, uh, like temporary import uh, artworks and bring them back, to, for example, to States. Before wow. you have to pay uh, VAT and also custom taxes, even if you just bring the artworks for the show and, uh, wow. yes, and delivering them back. Uh, so uh, th- this point also like a challenge. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, the payments. Uh, that's what I discovered recently. Uh, uh, being like a Russian entrepreneur or um, artist who want to sell mm-hmm. something abroad, uh, mm-hmm. it's a very complicated because uh, I cannot uh, use Russian bank account to uh, accept payments from uh foreign uh credit cards for example wow yes so <laughs> wow yeah 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 so if you yeah i mean it well i'm going to get to the next question i guess which is basically some russians have found homes in other places uh what keeps you in moscow what keeps you in russia mm, that's i would say that's only the technical aspect at the moment uh yeah how to figure it out uh, there are a few options. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, one of them is the green card lottery, which I mm-hmm. actually apply for five years already, but you mm-hmm. never know if it works or not. So you cannot right. rely on this option. And another mm-hmm. option is the O1 visa, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, can be uh, which can be done, uh, and I'll be able to work and live in states for three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the option which I'm going to work on next year, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, that's it, actually. Oh, you can get married for um, a foreign lady. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, but you only want to come to the USA, is that it? I mean, the world is so big. I'm sure someone else, somewhere else will be just as good or just as happy to have you. Or I'm just uh, curious because cause I think mm-hmm. the USA might be good for sure, but there's many other places in the world that are... Amazing. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it depends. Uh, it's the same approach. Uh, so mm-hmm. you have to apply to this uh, artist visa. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are a few things. Like first is the language. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah. Then, oh yeah. Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, then uh, market, mm-hmm. which is important yeah. as well, and mm-hmm. uh, potential uh, space to grow, uh, to right. move the career on. So uh, for me, state still attractive. Uh, yes. that's the n- number one maybe UK mm-hmm. is the second but I don't really know now with this Brexit thing right right, right. so I, I would stick to to states and uh, I have to say that 
a lot of friends of mine are already moved there. Wow. Well, you know, it's amazing because uh, in the U.S. we have our own problems as well, as you know. Um, they're not sure. necessarily so logistical. We can get payments easily with credit cards into our bank account, for example. But um, other things like the expenses uh, related to a studio, let's say in New York, maybe if you're somewhere in the countryside, it's not so expensive to have a studio. But then, you know, where's the market? I'm not sure if the market is always in the countryside. It depends what part of the countryside. But uh, and there are challenges everywhere. That's all I can say. Yeah, right. Yeah. But the, the, the levels are different. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, I'm, I guess that covers pretty much a question I thought about asking about your future plans. Like, what's coming up in terms of your career? Like, do you have some shows in mind? Or what do you plan to do uh, in the next year or so? Uh, at the moment, I'm working on my show. Uh, I'm going to have it in Belarus. That's uh, mm -hmm. my native country. And uh, in Minsk, in a national contemporary gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. The opening going to be at the end of uh, January. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a uh, personal show, and mm -hmm. that's the thing I work on. Then mm -hmm. uh, we scheduled another show in Paris uh, for second half of the year with Spearster Gallery, which I mm -hmm. work with. And uh, there are also two other projects and one uh, show in Moscow. Uh, I'm going to uh, start work uh, with uh, like with. Uh, few other galleries uh, which i mm -hmm. haven't worked before and uh, mm -hmm. also they're gonna be a public space project maybe i, I i'm gonna do a sculpture or something, oh, something that sounds like that. cool i don't think yeah. i've seen any of your sculptures so that will be me cool either <laughs> <laughs> that's well, gonna be I'm a challenge but yes well it's good to challenge yourself i mean you know all these challenges supposedly help us to become better people and once we somehow don't go crazy with the challenges <laughs> <laughs> yeah I agree. Well, what what artist influenced you uh, in your creative life i know you started out with the street art and the graffiti guys uh and you said you looked at the guys who were in the abstract expressionist abstract movement in in the usa in the 50s and 60s uh any specific artists or names you want to point out russian or american or mm. otherwise mm, I, uh, yeah like regarding russians i really like the movement which uh was here at the end of 19th century beginning of 20s because mm -hmm. uh, uh, many of russian artists they uh, went to paris uh, mm -hmm. get the knowledge and skills and came back uh, mm -hmm. and did all this uh, like classic paintings but they pretty pretty well done uh mm -hmm. and uh for for foreign artists i really enjoy the career of uh Kafs and uh, also retina because mm -hmm. we actually we have the same background or the same source mm -hmm. and uh yeah if we are talking about uh prominent american artists uh, i would notice mm -hmm. uh barnett newman then mm -hmm. uh, ed ed reinhardt Mm -hmm. Also and uh, yeah maybe yeah maybe a few other names but actually I I keep uh, watching a lot of artists and uh, mm -hmm. even like Richard Serra is still resonates me pretty well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, Pierre Soulage uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a French artist mm -hmm. and uh, yeah there are plenty of names actually but yes, uh, yes. Uh, also there are new new artists comes to the stage and they really enjoy what happens now even with paintings uh what they do and how they mix all the things together uh mm -hmm. with the technology and the materials so right well we i can't wait till we hang out again because i remember uh when we hung out in london it was a lot of fun and hopefully uh, we'll see you here in the u.s uh, soon as well how would you describe the art scene in Russia or in Moscow? Like, what goes on in the galleries and stuff like that? Uh, I know there's a, a major Hermitage exhibition with um, Adrian Geni right now. I think uh, that's very popular for Russians to go see. Is there anything else big happening there like that? Uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, Lucia Fon uh, Fontana uh, mm -hmm. at the moment in Moscow. That's a big mm -hmm. retrospective of him. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I know from the moment, and uh, yeah, in in commercial galleries, there there something happened, and uh, mm -hmm. I 
I couldn't say that I really like enjoy to uh, see local art. Uh, there are mm-hmm. only, only a few things I like, uh, mm-hmm. but I I usually try to go and see uh, most of the openings just to understand yeah. what what's going on there. Yeah. Um, and then how does the well? I guess I asked this, but I don't know if it really specifically relates to your work. But how does the political situation in Russia influence? what you're doing with your work. I know how it affects the bottom line, but your style of painting or subject matter, does it have any influence? Um, I would say that probably uh, no, uh, because mm-hmm. it, it has no influence. And uh, most of the artists try to be out of politics as well, because mm. uh, uh, Russia, like every year we have, uh, more and more um, cases about uh, political uh, statements from uh, mm-hmm. people, from bloggers, from mm-hmm. just like uh, uh, from young people. Actually, if you mm-hmm. even uh, do a post on your Facebook page, you you can mm-hmm. have a troubles. So it's better to be out apolitical. of this politics yeah, yeah, yeah apolitical. political yeah. and everybody claims that like oh, okay i i don't really care about politics yeah we do but uh, mm-hmm. we are not showing this and it's yeah, better no, to stay away no i can imagine I, I was speaking to some finance guys recently and um they were talking about what happened in the 90s and how much money was made by westerners and uh, one of them was talking about a case in which uh, a very high political official uh lost his position and the, Therefore, he lost his company, and the the lawyers who were in charge of brokering the deal, the main lawyer, was murdered, found murdered outside of Moscow in some suburb, and the the banker was basically telling me, anytime you see those guys outside of Russia with money, there's blood on their hands, and then I get chills, yeah, thinking about the mafia and stuff like that, oh, hard, hard. Yeah, that that's right, but. You know, like all big monies uh, came from nineties when they have to split all the treasuries and uh, mm-hmm. resources. So, mm-hmm. and only like few people survived. And now we mm-hmm. see them all over south of France, uh, Monaco, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in the auction houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the auction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, and, yeah. and in yeah. London, London definitely. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, most yeah. of these people, they have all their families abroad. Uh, they, right. uh, especially children, so they mm-hmm. get in uh, the education in London usually. Right. Yes. Well, uh, I tell you, the world, the world. Um, let's see. How have you seen the art world change from the 1990s to the present? I guess you answered that question already in the beginning. Uh, mm-hmm. somehow, you know, we talked about the opulence not being there and stuff like that. Well, is there anything else you wanted to add before uh, we switch off? I mean, I don't know if there's something you wanted to speak about. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't well, know. Tell me, what, tell me <laughs> about your friends. Tell me who are the artists uh, that, uh, do you hang out with artists over there? Or like, uh, what's your typical day? You go to the studio, you have a coffee, you make some calls. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Go to the bathroom. Like, what is, <laughs> yeah, what I, is your... actually, <laughs> good question. <laughs> I, I I prefer to wake up for early in the morning, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I do my coffee, then mm-hmm. check emails and uh, some news, and uh, make mm-hmm. a planning for the day. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it starts. Uh, mm-hmm. Then uh, I try to keep connection with my friends from graffiti. Who is mm-hmm. now not a graffiti writer, but still doing art, like as a post graffiti, I would say. Because mm-hmm. uh, we have uh, the same basement and it's really easy and interesting to keep the conversation with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, since we all grew up already, like almost, uh, they're like 35, like 38. I'm mm-hmm. already 41. Uh, mm-hmm. We grew up and uh, we have a different questions to life and to art. And it's really yes. interesting how the discussion uh, goes nowadays. Like it mm-hmm. was not so interesting like se- five, seven years ago. And now it's getting better, and I really <laughs> enjoy that. Right, <laughs> right, right. And where is the studio that you're moving to? You said you're moving in the next few months or something. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm gonna move to a new place. Uh, that's the building in front of uh, 
uh, old garage museum building. Now there oh. is a uh, there is a Jewish museum of to- uh, mm-hmm. for, of like, Jewish tolerance museum, mm-hmm. but it used to be a garage uh, till 2012, I think. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna be just across the street, and uh, that's amazing place. And uh, that's the area in Moscow where a lot of Jewish uh, live, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. have their like activities there. Shops, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. restaurants, and I really enjoy mm-hmm. this place. And it's very well developed, like in the last ten years. Oh, wow. So now it's very sophisticated. So let's see. Yeah, we're gonna have a meeting tomorrow, and uh, if we shake hands and uh, everything is okay, then we Good. moved uh-huh. in from first of January, and it's gonna be a new chapter because I'm gonna move in with two other friends, Aris, mm-hmm. uh, and we're gonna work together. And there are also like uh, seven or nine guys I already know, and they located there. So it's going to right. be like a uh, how to say power uh, power spot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's this whole artist scene. This uh, yeah, it sounds like a that, fun place to visit, actually. Yeah, and it's a pretty new for Moscow, I would say, because mm-hmm. uh, before. Uh, all artists I am in contact, they usually separate or they do something on their own. And uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's going to be a really good challenge now or the case uh, that we are now like uh, getting all together in one place yeah, and uh, do something. So let's see. Well, it might be an interesting nice. year next year. Yes, I really, I like that uh, energy of people coming together and sort of feeding off each other creatively and it sounds like exciting times. Yes, and, and uh, all, all the movements happened because uh, just artists came together and uh, made a group statement. And uh, absolutely, that's what, yeah, that's what happened with abstract artists, with impressionism, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Like uh, it's like a small wo- uh, small word, but talking loud when you have yes. like ten people behind you. Yes, absolutely. And then you were saying earlier that right now winter hasn't come. You guys haven't had like snow or some cold weather or stuff like that over there? Uh, yeah, it's still warm, like plus uh, two or three Celsius. But usually in December, there are a lot of snow in Moscow already. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when it's snow, it's getting like dirty, wet. And I, I don't really love snow here. I enjoy yes. it in Norway, but uh, watching on YouTube. <laughs> That's <Right>. it. <laughs> Right. Um, but now What's... it looks like a European winter and that's I uh, I enjoy this very much. Good. Good. And what um I forgot what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you something about um I forgot now. Something. It wasn't about the weather only but anyways, it'll come back to me, I guess. Okay. I hope so. But do you have any plans for like vacation or stuff like that? Like do you go on vacation somewhere? Mm, no, I, not at the moment because uh, I'm going to be pretty busy for the end of December and January because of this mm-hmm. project in Minsk with this mm-hmm. uh, state contemporary oh, yes. gallery and mm. uh, maybe after this, yes, yeah. I, I would love to, to move around. Bali, Bali, that's the perfect destination for most of the Russians uh, during the winter. Oh, really? I thought that, yeah, I thought they liked Thailand. Yeah, Thailand, Thailand is okay, but uh, if you want to be in a better, like, sophisticated place with better culture, I would prefer mm-hmm. Bali. Right. Yeah, I guess there's some uh, some creative life there on some level, for sure, with the dance, the food, the music, uh, the temples, everything. And yeah, then there's yeah, Ash- I, 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 yeah, go ahead. It's like an Instagram paradise, actually. <laughs> yeah, on every paradise. corner like you see these uh, beautiful pictures yeah well what time is it there now because here it's like 9 30 a.m what time is it in moscow uh yeah it's uh 5 50 yeah five hours different yeah eight hours different. yeah uh, eight, eight hours eight. yeah mm-hmm. exactly all right, well, that's a lot of hours. I'm going to let you go and have your, I guess, uh, evening tea or whatever it is you're going to do now. And um, <laughs> we should talk again soon. I mean, I, I'd like to follow up with you another time. Cool. Uh, with pleasure, Nicolette. Okay. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, take care. <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. You too. Yeah. Bye. 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 Uh,